I had a great conversation with one of my patients recently where he went out of town to see his girlfriend or his lady friend, right? The problem is that he got out of town with his girlfriend and he woke up in the middle of the night just ready to go. And so they went and this was day one of the trip, right? Day two, nothing. Day three, nothing. Day four, nothing. He gets back home and is really kind of in the in the in the dumps about what happened. So um, you know, so he's a new patient to me, and uh, he hasn't heard me speak about this. And you may not have heard me speak about this either. But when you are away for the weekend and you want to perform. So you got two or three days with somebody and you want to make sure that it is a great situation. You should not ejaculate day one. There it is. See, here's the thing. We're so excited to be there. So it's, it's new place, maybe even a new person, whatever have you. It's new. So you're excited and that's great. But the mistake that too many guys are making, and I don't want you to make the mistake, is that he goes ahead and finishes on day one. But let's talk about what happens after you finish. Every time you have sex and you ejaculate, afterwards, you're just kind of like, huh. Oh, okay, some space would be nice. Mm, okay, that was okay. Or looking over like, uh, I shouldn't have done this. You know, right? We've, we've all been there. But what that is, two things are happening there. After you've had this post-ejaculatory moment, now your body takes a minute to reset itself, right? Um, so it's taking a minute to reset itself. But what's even more important is that your brain is now just not as turned on about it as it was, you know? So... We forget that men have to be turned on too. They have to want to do it up here too. So if the brain chemistry isn't there, if the dopamine levels have kind of plummeted, then you don't have the ability to get, to, to get back hard very quickly. And what you'll notice is that after you did that first big one, the second one, you know, maybe a little less, you know, you may not have gotten as hard, may have taken a little longer. So what you want to do is you want to prolong ejaculation, right? So, so imagine you're in the throes of passion. Things are going great. Make sure your partner is, is, is turned on. And then you want to take care of their business. And then you kind of want to back off and save yours, right? So at this point, your partner's like, oh my goodness. Where is it? I want it. You know, like I, that may be my favorite part. Well, tease the partner and let them know, well, it's not time for that just yet. And see if you save it until the next day, now you're stronger. You have more power. You are ready for it. You know, when, when the Olympians decided that they weren't supposed to have sex before Olympic matches, it wasn't because of the sex. It was because of the ejaculation and the post ejaculatory hangover that men have. So what you want to do, avoid the post ejaculatory hangover so that you can actually get hard and stiff again in a way that you like without being like, dang, I did it once. Why, how come it's not doing it again? So the moral of that story is to reinforce the fact that when you want to be performing a couple days in a row, three days in a row, you want to save it, okay? Because, you know, if you've been following me, then you know too that I'm a strong advocate of not doing that every day. You know, holding off on that. Actually, you know, by the time you're in your 50s and your 60s, you really should be holding that and not doing it more than two or three times a month, actually. And this is based off of scientific data. This is based off of ancient cultures. Find one ancient culture that was very much into, you know, men being warriors and being strong and being virile. Find one ancient culture that told them all to go and ejaculate every day. You will not find it. They all, whether it's ancient Chinese culture, ancient, ancient 
cultures in Africa, ancient cultures all over the world say the same thing and they said it for a reason. So when you go on those trips, hold it, do not succumb to it. So then, you know, as you, as we go through here and you're learning with me and we're hanging out here, you learn how to hold it and how to not let it go because once you let it go, you have no control over what happens next. But as long as you contain it and you control it, you do have control over what happens next. Yeah. So what we find is that the one thing that I can do for a, a gentleman, especially a, a guy in his thirties and forties who comes to me and says, Dr. Rachel, I just, it's just not like what it used to be. Uh, so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. One of the biggest shifts that I can make is if I can convince him to stop ejaculating so much, you know, watching TV and just, woo, uh, you know, in the shower and just, woo, if I can get him to hold on to that a little longer and hold off on it, he is, becomes a better lover. He's stronger. He is, has more stamina for everything all the way across the board. So holding back and delaying is really going to be one of your biggest secrets to, you know, being where you want to be. <laughs> Victor says, sex only two or three times a month. See, you're not hearing me, Victor. I didn't say sex only two or three times a month. I said ejaculating two or three times a month. There's a big difference there. Unfortunately, porn has made us think that you're supposed to ejaculate every time, every time you do any little thing. And it's just not the case. <laughs> it's just not the case. So if you want to be stronger and, you know, do an experiment with yourself, go ahead and say, you know what? I think she's crazy, but I'm going to try it and I'm going to try it for the next 30 days. I'm just going to hold off. And every time I have sex, I'm going to be like, Oh, nope, not, not doing it today. And then I want you to go back and have sex, start back. And what you'll see is you become a stronger lover. You last longer. You're more in tune and in touch with what it is that you're doing. How can one have sex and holding back without ejaculate? Great question. So one thing, if you want to be able to hold back your ejaculate and be in control of when you ejaculate, ejaculate, and your partner wants you to be in control of that, right? Because it's no fun if you finish way before your partner, your partner's just like, oh, it's finished. So what you want to do is you want to last through your partner and then control when and if you go, right? So one of the best ways you can set yourself up for success is to start doing your dick ups right now. Dick ups are going to help with a PC flex. Some people call them kegels, whatever you want to call them, because you need to strengthen the pelvic floor enough so that you can use your pelvic floor to stop ejaculate in its tracks but also use it to, to last longer, be, be stronger, have stronger erections. So pelvic floor strength is such a big part of it. And the only way to have any control over when and if you, you do ejaculate is to strengthen your pelvic floor. Now, let me say this too. So many of you reach out to me and just kind of tell me what's going on and, and, you know, ask for a little feedback. Let's be clear. I want you to find somebody to practice these things with. Okay. It doesn't do us any good if we're just getting harder and stronger for you in the television and you in the, the computer, right? I want you to stop being afraid to be with somebody. You know, you're afraid that maybe if you're with them, it's not going to work how you want it to. Let's remove that fear a little bit, because if you have a reason to get harder, you start to get harder. But if you don't have a reason, and that reason being somebody that you find attractive, somebody that you find exciting, then it's, 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 it's dead in the water, right? So if you don't have anyone to have sex with currently, our goal this week is to find somebody you like and start talking to them, courting them, whatever you want to do, text them, DM them, whatever, so that you can have it set up so that when you feel ready with your newfound strength and skill, <laughs> then you are ready to go. So please, 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 please. Step one, 
Let's find somebody to be intimate with. You know, and this doesn't have to be the perfect somebody, you know, it's just somebody that you like, that you're attracted to, that can help you get turned on, right? Because it's hard to turn yourself on and it's much easier to practice and to do some of these things if you have someone to do them with. Now, you can find somebody. You're attractive, you are strong, you're a guy, you know, get, just get out there, get some phone numbers. That's how it all starts, right? If you want to slide in their DMs and send them messages online, that, you know, that'll get you somewhere too. But next time you're in the grocery store, I know it's, it's, it's much easier to approach people with a mask on. Now, you know, if you're a little shy, just compliment him or her on something and start the conversation and say, look, I got to run, but let me get your number and maybe we can, we can get together and have dinner sometime. Bam, it's done. So please, if you don't have anyone to have sex with right now, anyone that you're interested in, let's find somebody.